course, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our, our live press conference with Premier and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Diluji, wherein he'll be providing updates on current general matters that relate to the territory. Uh, the Premier will give his updates, after which the media who is here at this press conference will be able to have an opportunity to ask questions to the Premier based on the topics that he pre presents this morning. Yes. And so without further uh, ado, we'll turn our attention to the Premier, Premier Woodley, with his updates. Uh, thank you, Desiree. And good morning to the press corps and people of the Virgin Islands. I'm very pleased to hold this press conference, which is the first by the new government administration that I lead. Today kicks off our plans for bi-monthly press conferences to ensure regular communication with the press. We are fully committed to transparency and keeping the public informed on what is taking place in government. Before going any further, I want to extend my heartfelt and deepest condolences to the family and friends of my cousin, Mr. Kimo Letsum, another young man who has lost his life to gun violence. His murder has deeply hurt his loved ones and the wider District 7 community. The murders we are experiencing are very worrying development for us as a territory. Yesterday, His Excellency the Governor, Mr. John J. Ranking, CMG, convened a meeting of the National Security Council, which I attended along with the Minister for Communications and Works, Honorable Kai Raima, and other members of the Council to discuss the situation. We are resolved that more must be done to arrest crime and solve murder cases. I have requested of the National Security Council an action plan to confront the challenge of violent crime in our community so it can be rooted out from these Virgin Islands. Later today, the Governor and I will be making a joint statement, making a firm commitment to tackling crime and preserving our security. These senseless deaths must stop. It is imperative that we remove illegal guns from our Virgin Islands now. It is time for action, and your government will make this a top priority. I call on everyone to do their part, including providing information to the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, which can be done anonymously. I also urge you to report any suspicious activity that you see taking place in your neighborhood. The fight against violent crime cannot be won without the support of the community. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to provide a post-election update on where things stand following the incident-free general elections held on the 24th of April, 2023. I again want to thank everyone who exercised their right to vote and will do everything in my power to restore the confidence of those persons who did not vote in the general elections. The only way to accomplish this is to ensure that the political system delivers for everyone, which I'm committed to achieving. Following the general election, the new government was sworn into office on the 25th of April. Subsequently, ministerial appointments were confirmed on the 28th of April. I remain the Premier and Minister of Finance, and I'm also the Minister with Responsibility for Natural Resources that now sits within the Premier's office. I will be supported in my ministerial responsibilities by Dr. the Honorable Carl Dawson, Junior Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, and the Honorable Luce Hardsmith, Junior Minister for Tourism and Culture. The Honorable Lorna Smith OBE, is Deputy Premier and Minister for Financial Services, Labor and Trade. This is a new and necessary ministerial portfolio that places these three interrelated subjects and others under one ministry, which will allow for greater policy coherence in their administration. We had discussed the establishment of a financial services ministry for a long time. And Honorable Smith is highly qualified and competent to successfully lead and oversee the new ministry. 
The Honorable Kai Raima remains Minister for Communications and Works and is a member of the National Security Council. He will lead on our much needed infrastructural development and improvement. The Honorable Shari De Castro remains Minister of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports. Her competency will deliver better outcomes in education, youth development and athletics, among other sports. Finally, the Honorable Vincent Wheatley is Minister of Health and Social Development. He will lead our efforts to fix the national health insurance, to deliver better medical care in the territory, including the sister islands, and to fix the incinerator problem once and for all. Our ministerial team is ready to serve the people of the Virgin Islands. Yesterday, an orientation session for members of cabinet was conducted to ensure everyone has a clear understanding of what is required and what is expected of them. At the level of the public service, permanent secretaries and the process of being briefed on their assignments and their respective ministries, as well as ongoing initiatives which are taking place within the ministries. They will soon initiate the process of converting the Virgin Islands Party Manifesto which has been mapped to the National Sustainable Development Plan into a government policy agenda, which the public service will be tasked with delivering over the course of our term. The government's overarching policy framework is the National Sustainable Development Plan. Implementation of the plan will begin later this year, supported by the United Nations system in the Eastern Caribbean. I look forward to detailing our comprehensive policy agenda in a statement in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the legislative branch of government, I'm very pleased that on 18th of May, all district and at-large representatives will be sworn in at the first sitting of the first session of the fifth House of Assembly. The wheels of democracy are turning as we continue the new era of democratic governance. More immediately, I will travel to London on Wednesday to attend the coronation of King Charles III. I will then attend the Joint Ministerial Council between the United Kingdom and the Overseas Territories Ministers. I will be joined at the JMC by Deputy Premier Lorna Smith, whose wealth of experience as a former director of the of the BVI London office, and executive director of BVI Finance will add great value to my delegation. Honorable Smith and I will also resume engagement with our UK partners to continue the process of building a new modern partnership that is stable and supports the aspirations of the people of the Virgin Islands. Among other things, we will meet the UK OT Minister Lord Goldsmith other UK ministers, and the BVI All-Party Parliamentary Group in the United Kingdom Parliament to discuss how the UK government can support my administration's agenda on reform, economic resilience, infrastructure, sustainable development, climate change, environment, education, health and security. Ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up my introductory statement and I'm happy to take any questions that the press may have. I thank you. And we thank you very much, uh, Premier Wheatley, for those very informative updates. And, and yes, the Premier, it's his press conference, so he's open to receiving some questions respectfully on the um, matters that he uh, spoke about this morning. And so uh, we invite you now. We'll have two questions each from each media house represented here. Uh, this morning, and if the Premier is able to, he'll take some more uh, subsequent to that. Um, so you're invited to say, state your name and the organization you represent as you ask your, the Premier your questions. Good morning, Premier, and uh, congratulations to you and your government formally 
from the management and staff of uh, JTV Jaffix. Um, my Thank first you. question relates to the most gruesome incident that you would have alluded to, uh, that's the shooting death. I recall in 2021, a contract was signed, I think, with uh, one of the providers for surveillance cameras to be installed around the territory following the passage of hurricanes Arma and Maria. And subsequently, the need for that has escalated with the, the shooting deaths that has been plaguing the territory. Uh, where are we with that? No, because security cameras have been installed throughout the territory. And uh, police regularly use the CCTV footage to assist in their investigations. So that full that full situation was was dealt with according to the contract that was signed in 2021. Based on the contract, but of course, there's always a need for more cameras. Uh, and to the best of your um, knowledge, are there any in the areas that this recent uh, incident took place? You know, I I don't know the specific locations of the cameras, uh, which I'm fine with. The police know where they are, and they've placed them in strategic positions uh, so that they can. Um, get information on uh, any information that they might need in an investigation. Okay, my second allowed question, uh, that is as it relates to the continuation of the implementation of the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry. We would recall that uh, the governor had indicated during the campaign period that, you know, come the start of the new government, he will be sitting and... Uh, making new arrangements so that we can move forward. Uh, we heard that the, an emergency meeting was called by the Security Council. Has the governor called you yet in to start those renegotiations of uh, delivery? Uh, repeat your, the, your question once more, please. Okay, so the governor had indicated that uh, with the formation of the new government, he would seek to speedily have the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry taken forward with new deadlines and such uh, being set. Uh, has the governor yet called you in for a meeting to start those discussions? Um, the governor and I had a brief um, bilateral meeting um, after cabinet yesterday, and we started some preliminary discussions about how we move forward as it pertains to the COI uh, recommendations and their implementations, just very early discussions. Okay, and follow up to that, can you say if a new deadline has been set for the completion of those recommendation implementations? Um, since last administration, we had requested um, extended deadlines and of course, those deadlines were, were granted based on, on the requests. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, Horace, please, please. Come forward with your questions. Good morning. Cindy Roseanne, Guava Berry Media. Congratulations to your new government. Thank you. Kathy asked one of my questions. I only have one. <laughs> Former Premier Andrew Foy stated in early 2022 that further legal issues were holding up progression on Prospect Reef. Can you give us a full update, please, and if that could include any negotiations on the table, who with, and the specifics of those negotiations? Um, very soon, I'll be engaging the Prospect Reef Board on issuing a request for proposal uh, for a development at Prospect Reef. We see Prospect Reef as a hotel um, that can offer a convention center services to our business community and assist our business community in, in, um, <clears throat> in being able to host uh, meetings, conferences, etc. cetera. Um, so Prospect Reef is a big part of what it is we are attempting to do, and the public will see a, a request for proposal very soon and thereafter once we request once we receive proposals um, the board will deliberate and will, uh, obviously will choose who they believe is the best um, the best um, tenderer so there's nothing on the table now just open for fresh negotiations nothing on the table uh, when the request for proposal goes out anyone who is interested will be able to um, put forward a proposal and they'll they'll have a fair and transparent process to select um, a proposal. Thank you. Thank you. We have 
Wait for Media as well, and we have um, Beacon, and we have ZBBI Radio. Please. Good morning, sir. Zan Lewis, ZBBI Radio. Premier, it's not the first time you would have said that you met with the National Security Council when there is a murder, right, where more needs to be done. It's not the first time you're saying that more needs to be done. The murders continue to happen. Probably is an indication that more is not being done. What more uh, do you intend to do in an attempt to address these murders? Uh, thank you, Zan. As I said, I pressed for an action plan. But that action plan must include border security because we know that illegal guns are coming into the territory. Um, of course, we're surrounded by water, so they're coming in by sea. And I'm pressing um, the National Security Council, as well as my own Ministry of Finance, to ensure that we get radar uh, so that we can detect any illegal vessel, vessels entering into the territory, possibly smuggling guns, drugs, and even human trafficking. But of course, Zan, we know much more needs to be done. For instance, in our school system, I'm going to be tasking the Minister of Education to come up with a plan to deal with those persons in our school system who show signs of delinquency, who could lead, who could be led uh, easily into a life of crime. Because of course, when you um, detain criminals and you have new criminals popping up every day, it is certainly a challenge. And of course, we've spoken about uh, empowering our traffic police to ensure that we are able to detect guns that might be traversing back and forth through the territory uh, within, within persons' vehicles. But there's so much more that needs to be done, Zan, and I have to say to you, we also have to return to the question of legislation. Last administration, we did not like how the whole police act came to the, came to the public. Uh, we did make an amendment to the police act that will allow for DNA evidence to be um, taken uh, from persons with good reason and good cause. And that DNA evidence will be key in solving many unsolved murders. And certainly we are going to go through our procurement processes uh, so that we can have um, the DNA lab that we use in Miami able to analyze the samples that we do have. But there's so much more that needs to be done, Zan. As you know, crime is a worldwide problem. I'm just about to come yes. to Premier. Because the issue of crime not only affects the Virgin Islands, you would have heard Caribbean governments crying out for um, upsurge in crime. One of the things they did was to have meetings because the guns, as you said, are coming in, had to yeah. be coming from somewhere. Yes. And they would have met with U.S. officials, yes. met with certain persons for them to do more to stop the guns from leaving where it's coming from to get to that destination. Would you, sir, and um, your government be going along that route to have discussions with certain authorities, UK, US authorities, um, borders patrol, to ensure that more is done to prevent guns from leaving their shores to come to the BFI? Well, I have to tell you, as an associate member of CARICOM, um, I've been intimately involved in the discussions with CARICOM uh, with the United States government because, of course, it's long been a cry by CARICOM that most of the guns which you find in the Caribbean originate in the United States of America. And it is a concern for all of us, and we do believe that the United States government can do more to prevent the proliferation of guns in this region. Um, certainly it's something that we all have to to take into account in the, in the very same United States of America, they face the same challenge with guns being used um, in mass shootings in the United States. So it is very much a concern and we're gonna continue pressing along with our CARICOM brothers and sisters uh, for greater control of, of guns in our, um, in our region. And the United States has to 
play a key role in that. Premier, who's the Minister of Agriculture? I'm the Minister of Agriculture, but I'll be ably assisted by um, Dr. The Honorable Cal Dawson. Premier, you, same question, agriculture. Premier, you will agree with me that not much, if any, was done for agriculture over the past months, even when you were agriculture minister. I believe you'll be dissatisfied of the amount of work that was done to support agriculture and fisheries in the BVI. You made mention of several items in terms of the reservoir. Months after months, you're saying the money is available to build this reservoir, yet no reservoir is there. You spoke about landing areas for fish here in the mm -hmm. Virgin Islands. Would you, sir, would you agree, first of all, that as agriculture minister in the past, not, not enough was being done, and you intend to do much more this time around to, in, to uh, make sure that farmers and fishermen are more happy? Uh, I wouldn't agree that nothing was done. Not yeah, I wouldn't agree that nothing much was was done, but I will agree that more should have been done and that we can expect a lot more to happen. Unfortunately, Zan, um, we have to build a system that is able to execute ministerial mandates more efficiently and more effectively. So one thing I'm going to do with this administration, not just for agriculture and fisheries, but just for everyone, we're going to have regular meetings with the deputy governor and the permanent secretaries. And we will hold them accountable to delivering on the mandates of ministers. I'll say to you, Zan, the experience, it's like it's a it's an experience like no other, going before the electorate and having to explain to the electorate why certain things were done or not done. And really, that's something that elected officials have to do. But we need persons who work within these our various ministries who work hard, they are hard workers, but there are certain things that we need to do to ensure that they are able to deliver the ministerial mandates. And these are mandates given to ministers by the people of the Virgin Islands. So you couldn't expect a lot of action um, because we're not gonna ex we, got, we are not going to um, expect any less and we're not going to accept any less for the people of the Virgin Islands. This four year term, is going to be a productive term, and we're going to demand results for the people of the Virgin Islands. Just a follow-up on that. So are you saying, sir, the lack of work done, not enough being done, or in the last term, you are blaming those persons, those senior civil servants, for not um, fulfilling the mandate given to them? You are blaming them for what happened? I'm not blaming a soul, Zan. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your question so I can clarify. This thing is a partnership. You know, every mandate that I have, like I said, you said nothing much was done. Work was done. Work was done. People within those ministries did work. Am I satisfied that enough was done? No. So it's going to be a partnership. I'm going to support the permanent secretaries, the deputy secretaries, assistant secretaries, heads of department, every single person working in the public service. I will give them my full support so that they can do the best job possible. But we have to walk together and we have to hold each other accountable to ensure that we deliver for the people of the Virgin Islands. And that's my focus. My focus is not on blame. My focus is getting on getting the job done. And everybody, myself, ministers, everybody has to pull up their socks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, good morning, Premier. Uh, good morning to the viewing public. Um, good morning. My first question uh, is in relation to, you did say May 18th is the first uh, House of Assembly session where the respective elected officials will be sworn in. Yes. Uh, my first question is, will there be any order of businesses, uh, as an order of business brought forward as it relates to any legislation um, in that particular sitting? Uh, more specifically, uh, one of the legislations he would have been campaigning on the Retiring Allowances Act. How soon before we see that brought to the House of Assembly, considering he did promise to repeal the entire bill? Okay, thank you uh, for that question, Kamal. Traditionally, we don't conduct any business on the, the first um, house sitting. Um, you, you go ahead and you elect your speaker, etc. You allow the members to uh, make some speeches and then you... 
um, close the session. So the next house sitting after that um, business will be considered and conducted. As it pertains to the Legislative Retirement Allowances uh, Act, um, <clears throat> soon uh, at the cabinet meeting, perhaps after I return from London, uh, we'll have a cabinet paper which will put forward a decision to have that <clears throat> the offending sections of that act repealed. But as the Attorney General reminded us uh, when we had the recalled House of Assembly, it's important for us to go through the legislative process. So we don't want to make mistakes and we don't want to skip steps. But I can assure you that at the cabinet meeting, when I return from London, which we won't have any cabinet meetings um, before, um, we will make a decision to repeal the offending sections of the <clears throat> retirement um, leg legislative Retirement Allowances Act. Okay, and just for clarification to the public as well, um, it was also uh, mentioned as well that persons who would benefit, you can repeal a bill, but you can't necessarily retract who would necessarily benefit. Uh, can you basically explain that to the public as well for those persons who stand to still benefit from those parts that will be repealed after the fact? Well, that is something that we're going to need legal advice on. Persons who have already become entitled uh, to benefits. Uh, we certainly don't want to <coughs> disenfranchise anyone from a legal perspective and taking away rights which they have already earned. So that one uh, will be some one for the Attorney General uh, to advise on. But for me, for me, thank you, for me the, the ideal situation is to have salaries which have been um, which have been um, come up with salaries from an independent body. Uh, Pricewaterhouse and Coopers is currently conducting a review of salaries, and we would want for them to to recommend salaries for legislators, which is commensurate with the roles and responsibilities, and also takes into consideration all other professions, teaching nursing, anyone in the public service, and that we have something that's, that's fair and that's equitable. And that for your pension to be calculated based on your salary, just like anyone's pension is calculated based on their salary. I do think the system of legislators deciding on how they're compensated in terms of pensions is, is, is not the best practice. And I believe that's something that we should move away from. Okay, my second question, um, you would have listed uh, the ministerial portfolios recently. Um, for many, uh, a lot of persons quite may not be privy to the gazetted document which should have the list of the other areas of focus. For example, as you said, you are responsible mainly for agriculture with yeah. the junior minister who will obviously take um, control or m more control as it pertains to the responsibilities. But for example, we are custom, for example, of you uh, being also the Minister of, of, of Tourism as well. Yes. Um, could you explain to the public, just to give some insight as it relates to the, the behind the scenes process that went into determining the respective ministries? Okay, thank you. Um, I would say the biggest factor in some of the changes which took place was the creation of a new ministry that would really suit the, the very exceptional skill sets of the Deputy Premier, uh, Mrs. Lorna Smith, uh, Honorable Lorna Smith OBE. Um, as you know, as you may know, she walked in the Premier's office uh, or, ch or Chief Minister's office for many years she worked with Lavity, um, the late, great Lavity Stout. She worked with Ralph O'Neill. Uh, she worked as, uh, as the director of the BVI London office. She was the CEO of BVI Finance. You know, if, in her private um, life, she, she works with financial services. And so she is very capable. And we've long spoken about the creation of a 
ministry specifically for financial services. And I thought that this was a good opportunity to be able to do so. In addition to that, we know that our business community and our workforce, we're not happy with the efficiency and effectiveness of both the trade department and the labor department. Again, uh, we have hardworking individuals in those departments. But in addition to ensuring that they have more resources to be able to support their work, we have to ensure that we have some level of reform to ensure that we provide better service to the business community and better services to the workforce while ensuring that we have a, a system in place to ensure that we have homegrown, um, um, locally trained uh, workforce to supplement, um, or really the, the, the persons who come from elsewhere will supplement that, that workforce that we have uh, locally. So the challenges are great, and she is a fixer. You know, she's a doer, uh, and we expect for her to do um, to do great things in that ministry. Now, to create that new ministry, obviously we had to make some adjustments. So what we had to do is take some of the areas on the natural resources and put it under the premier's office to be able to facilitate the creation of this fifth ministry. But ultimately, we need an additional ministry. Um, we have provisions for a sixth ministry uh, in order to do that, you'd have to add two seats to the House of Assembly. And that's really a conversation for the people of the Virgin Islands, whether that's something that they have an appetite for. But with all the subjects that we have, um, really the work needs an additional minister. But in order to help myself, um, just like last administration, I had two permanent secretaries. I will continue to have two permanent secretaries with possibly adding another uh, to make sure that the work is, is getting done and no areas being neglected. I'm happy to, to hold the environmental portfolios. They are very important to where we're going in the Virgin Islands. I should say to you that the green agenda is a big part of the next four years. We're talking about alternative energy. We're talking about recycling. We're talking about protecting our marine assets, um, our coastal assets, uh, all of those things are very important to the work that we'll be doing f over the next four years. Just, just a quick follow-up. Um, minist um, the natural resources portfolio, agriculture portfolio, tourism portfolio, uh, those are three very critical portfolios. Yes. For those who may be concerned as it relates to, isn't that too much responsibility as it relates to you know, you being the premier and minister of finance, you already have so much responsibility. Could you actually dedicate your time to ensure that those particular portfolios are given the attention needed? Well, the good thing about it is when you think about tourism and you think about your natural environment, they really go together. You know, so there's a lot of synergy between tourism, the natural environment, agriculture and fisheries. Agriculture and fisheries are also a big part of your tourism product in creating linkages between the agricultural industry uh, and the tourism industry. For instance, like um, food, um, um, farm to table concepts and having more locally grown food and, and locally caught fish to give to your tourists. So there's natural synergy. And I have confidence that the technocrats that we have who really do the majority of the work and of course, um, they just need um, policy direction and leadership. Um, I'm confident that we'll have the resources to be able to make those things a reality and to move the needle. But of course, if we, uh, if we perceive that there's anything lacking, we can add the resources necessary to make sure that no area is being neglected. One final follow-up. Yes. Um, you mentioned that you and Honorable Smith are, are going um, to the UK on Wednesday. Who's going to be leading, leading the country then? Okay, well, I'm, well, actually, <clears throat> Honorable Smith um, won't be leaving on Wednesday because she'll be attending the JM's J Joint Ministerial Council, and that doesn't start, I believe, until Monday. But um, the <clears throat> Wednesday, I'm leaving, leaving so I can attend the, the King's coronation. So Honorable Smith will be here until Friday, 
And once Honorable um, Smith leaves, Honorable Vincent Wheatley will be acting, acting Premier. Thank you. Thank you. Premier and everyone, uh, Dana Campo with the BVI Beacon. Uh, before I get to my uh, questions, I had a quick follow-up about the two additional seats in the House of Assembly you mentioned. Is that something that would have to wait another four years? Is that something that could be done with a midterm election, or how would people go about that if there was an interest in that? Um, there's something called a boundaries commission. It's allowed for in our constitution. Uh, right now, we'd have to appoint a boundaries commission. There would have to be some level of consultation with the people of the Virgin Islands and a decision could be made before next election, right? But um, that is just right now a, a, a concept. Um, I'm not putting forward any plans to have a boundaries commission, and that would be something for the people of the Virgin Islands. If that's something that they call for, that's something that we can initiate. initiate. At this present moment, we're moving forward with the 13 members that we have right right now. And as you know as well, we also have a constitutional review that's taken place. And of course, many persons have been deliberating and discussing about, you know, the at-large seats versus district seats, how you select a premier, etc. So I expect that those discussions will take place as we take a look at the report which will be produced by the Constitutional Review Commission. And uh, one other follow-up on the Police Act that you had raised before. Um, to, where there was a more comprehensive review initially proposed. Uh, is that something that we could expect at the beginning of the legislative agenda coming into the new House? The Police, the police Act? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more comprehensive view of it. Yes, yeah, so, um, at, the, at the time when we um, basically pulled it, uh, we did say to the public that uh, we need a little bit more time mm -hmm. to discuss it with the people. Uh, so you can expect that we will have the conversation, especially as it pertains to the upsurgence of crime. You cannot ignore legislative remedies to help to arrest the problem of crime. So I ask persons to take a mature look and approach to the concept of uh, what could be done to help um, to help enhance policing, while at the same time ensuring that we protect our civil uh, rights so that they're not abused by giving the police too much power. It's a mature conversation that the people of the Virgin Islands have to have. We fully appreciate um, at the end of the last um, House of Assembly, uh, things didn't go as, as I would have liked. Um, but with now, with the benefit of time, I think it's important that we look at it early as opposed to leaving it late and running into the same challenge that we experienced before. Uh, then my first question, when the new government was formed uh, shortly after the COI report came out, um, Honorable Vincent Wheatley had left his ministerial role. Could you explain the thought process behind reinstating him as a minister and whether any conversations were had with the UK? Um, no conversations were had with the UK about reinstating him as a minister. We know there were lots of rumors that he could not sit in cabinet. Uh, we always knew that those rumors were false. The governor himself confirmed that he had no hand in uh, selecting members of the cabinet. Um, so Honorable Vincent Wheatley is someone who's been in leadership positions. He's been um, a, a deputy, uh, a, a deputy uh, principal. He's been the Sister Islands coordinator. He's been someone who's shown leadership in his community um, in Virgin Gorda and throughout the Sister Islands. Uh, he's more than capable of holding a ministerial portfolio. He did good work when he was there um, as a cabinet member before. As it pertains to health, of course, we thought he would be a good person to take that portfolio um, forward. Uh, he is, um, as we know, he's a representative of the 9th District, and they have some very unique challenges as it pertains to the provision of health care. He'll be very sensitive to those concerns, and I think that he'll help the health services authority. He'll provide the leadership needed to ensure that they are able to serve all the people of the Virgin Islands. 
that we have equity across across our four main islands as it pertains to the delivery of healthcare services, as well as um, the social development part of his portfolio and the other parts of his portfolio, waste management, etc. I have great confidence in him that he'll do an excellent job. <coughs> My final question, uh, members of the opposition had mentioned trying to establish um, shadow ministries, for example, looking at having Honorable uh, Mater serve as the shadow education minister to Honorable De Castro. Is that something that you would support, and how would you go about that? Um, well, I support having a, a opposition that will hold the government accountable, that will provide uh, greater transparency, that will challenge ideas which... Uh, need to be challenged. Uh, we welcome it as a part of the democratic process. Uh, what I don't welcome is ideas that they're going to seek to disrupt the work of the government for the people of the Virgin Islands. We've heard uh, things from uh, who they have described themselves as a united opposition, as saying that they're going to have votes of no confidence without even anything even coming to the House. So in, that, in my opinion, that shows um, bad intentions on behalf of the opposition. So I would ask myself whether they're interested in supporting the work for the people of the Virgin Islands or are they interested in power? Are they just wanting to try to make the government look bad or are they willing to cooperate, all 13 of us, in the best interest of the people of the Virgin Islands? The people of the Virgin Islands elected 13 persons who they believe were best there to represent them. It's important that we walk together in the best interest of the people of the Virgin Islands and forget so much about trying to capture power. The elections are over. Now it's time to walk on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. Do you see these uh, shadow ministries as being any sort of way forward to work more collaboratively? or You know, if, if they want to be able to have um, ministers have specific focus on different areas... I, I, you know, that won't bother me at all. I, I'm going to still go about doing my work. Um, and however they want to organize themselves as a opposition, that's for them to decide. I, I don't have a challenge with it. I'm not daunted by it. I'm not intimidated by it. Uh, we're going to work on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor, that, that's all the media right now, but I, we do have a, a, a follow-up from JTV if you're able to take that. A anyone who wants to ask additional questions, I have no challenge. I have, I have time. Great. Thank you, Premier. Okay, thank you so much, Premier, and thank you so much, Desri. Uh, before I go to the follow-up, uh, this one I just take a peep at the, the live stream and the comments there, and the more than questions or concerns about the topics being discussed, person seems to be expressing a concern about the status of your health, probably hearing your voice. So could you speak to the people as it relates to how are you doing health-wise? Well, um, you know, it's, it's a difficult um, campaign, as you know. You get little rest, and in some instances you, you don't eat well, um, and you don't take care of yourself well. So I've... Um, um, I've uh, made a, a, a decision uh, that I'll, over this four years, I'll try to see if I can take a little bit better care of myself and to pace myself a bit. I mean, of course, when you see the size of my portfolio, you wouldn't think that, but I will take uh, efforts to, to um, look after my health, and um, I thank the people who have expressed their concerns. Are you in good steads as it relates right now to travel and still maintain a good level of health? Uh, yes, yes. I went to nature's way and I got myself a nice little concoction. So <laughs> probably by tomorrow I'll be I'll be just fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, yes. uh, Premier, uh, as it relates to um, promises that were made on the campaign trail, uh, could you talk to your intentions as to how speedily are you intending to deal with the referendum proposed uh, for same-sex marriage? Uh, we want to do that actually very soon. Um, as you know, we would be having a, I think there's a case which is slated for, for June. So we wanted to be able to have the referendum ahead of that. So that's one thing, of course, that is, um, persons are going to be hearing about very, very soon. Thank you, Premier. Yes. Thank you, JTV. Oh, so we have uh, ZDVI as well. Premier. 
You stated that you will be going to the UK and um, also that Mrs. Smith will be going to the UK after and also you commended the leadership of Mr. Vincent Wheatley, very strong leader, Yes, according to you. He has been given the deputy, deputy premier in the absence of you and Mrs. Smith. Okay. Kai Reimer was demoted or removed from the deputy premier's position to make way for Lorna Smith. Now, when all of you are absent, she is not going to act the truth uh, Mr. Wheatley, why Mr. Wheatley and not, and not Kai Reimer, who would have had the experience serving over the years or over the months in your absence? Uh, well, thank you again, Zan, for, for the question so I can clarify. Uh, Honorable Reimer has um, personal business that he has to attend to, so he's going to be um, traveling briefly for a few days. Um, I believe his, his daughter is having a graduation. So, um, um, well, quite naturally, um, Honorable Reimer would have been acting premier. Um, but because he was traveling, it, was, it wasn't possible. But thank you for the questions, and so I could clarify that. And let me just say, I have a great deal of confidence in Honorable Reimer. Uh, he'll be serving with me in the National Security Council. And of course, um, Honorable Lorna Smith OBE, you know, I have a great deal of confidence in her as well. Um, as well as Honorable Shari De Castro. So I feel confident that if one is not available, you know, others can be able to, to serve in that role. I think I'm blessed to have a cabinet of very strong ministers and even strong junior ministers who can step up to the plate where, where necessary. And Lorna Smith being there makes the cabinet much stronger. Absolutely, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. In fact, I would, I would go as far as say we're, we're quite fortunate to have someone of her caliber uh, with us during this administration. And the people of the Virgin Islands will benefit as a result. Premier, <coughs> during the campaign, they had to apologize many times mm -hmm. for making mistakes. Yeah. Obviously, that um, you don't like that. It wasn't good for you. Right. What are you going to do this time around? You would have realized why the mistakes were made. So you will have a knowledge not um, what you need to do to prevent these mistakes from happening again. Yes. What do you intend to do, sir, to make sure that these mistakes, or not these mistakes, but mistakes of a similar nature, do not happen again and, and may not force you to apologize in the future? Yeah, I'm not saying I'll never make a mistake again, Zan, because I'm not perfect. But as you say, you try your best to learn from your mistakes and not repeat them. And one thing you have to do is trust your principles. So you know transparency is key. So you know that you can't hide things from the public. Anything that you feel that you have to hide, you know it's not the right thing. So full transparency, strengthening your institutions, your institutions of democratic governance. For instance, we're gonna to move to set up whistleblower office. We're gonna ensure that our Integrity in Public Life Act, that is in force. You know, we're going to um, make some, some real work towards, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and demand that we get that Freedom of Information Act to the people, you know? And you have to also trust the members that you have around you. Uh, this is gonna be a team effort. You know, everybody is going to have to come together and to be able to make decisions together. Um, and of course, you know, um, they say sunlight is the best disinfectant. So when you do things in a collaborative manner, in a democratic manner, in a transparent manner, um, it leads to a better result. And really democracy, there's no perfect democracy anywhere in the world. Um, but we know what the, the components of a good democracy is. We know that you have to make sure that the public is educated informed and involved. Those things lead to better, to better government. And, and all I can say, Zan, is the, the four years which were passed were very much a learning experience, very instructive. Just about anything that could have happened did happen. And that institutional knowledge that I now have will be brought to bear in the position that I'm, that I'm in now 
to give the people of the Virgin Islands better leadership and better governance. So are you saying, sir, you, you spoke about the importance of having transparency, yes, democracy. This was lacking before. Um, there was uh, you, when these decisions in the back. You think the whole issue of democracy and transparency in government were lacking, and it needs to definitely deal with now. In some instances, yes. In some instances, yes. Uh, we've learned a lot about what happened for the past four years. And if I had to go back and do certain things differently, I would. And, uh, but I can't go back. So the only thing I can do is, is move forward um, in a way that I believe is, is right. And based on those experiences, I have a great deal of confidence that a lot of those mistakes we won't repeat. And whatever mistakes we do make, because we're human beings, we'll try our best to correct. Just allow me one more, please, Kamish. Um, Premier, the whole issue of the information, documentation, papers during the committee stage in the House of Assembly, calls have been made to make mm -hmm. this public, these documents public. You'll be doing that? Well, I have no challenge. I think that's one of the first things the House of Assembly should, should discuss. We'll have to appoint a standing orders committee, but I believe we should discuss committee stages being public. I have nothing to hide from the people, uh, whether in committee stage or any other stage. So we, we want to see persons be involved in the process. There are other countries, let's take the United States for interest, instance, their committee sessions are open to the public, They're fully televised. Of course, there may be instances where, because if you're discussing something of a sensitive nature, you may have to go in camera. Um, that's fine. But um, I have no challenge with the committee stages of the House of Assembly being made public. Festival soon. You have a budget? It will be big. Um, what sort of budget are you going to have for that? I think we have a similar budget to last year. Um, but um, we're going to make the best use of the resources we have to, to have a great celebration as we did last year. I have great confidence in, in the leadership of the Festival and Fairs and all the committee members that they will deliver for the people of the Virgin Islands. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Zan. Thank you. We have one more. The BVI Tourist Board remains closed three months later, three plus months. Can you give us an update on that closure, their office? Um, no, I don't have an update at this time. But I can, I can get back to you on that. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I think, Premier, thank you very much. Um, this brings the press conference to a close, a very comprehensive one. So we're grateful, um, Premier, for your time and, and making yourself available to do this for, for the public. And I just want to thank um, the members of the media for their questions. I thank you as moderator, uh, Desri, and I, I certainly want to thank the people of the Virgin Islands for their attention and for their prayers and their support. Um, and I just want to thank God as well. Um, I, I really want to thank God for allowing me the opportunity and allowing my, my colleagues the opportunity to serve the people of the Virgin Islands. And we'll certainly do our utmost to ensure that you're not disappointed. The people of the Virgin Islands are not disappointed and that we serve uh, your needs uh, with care, with compassion, with diligence. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to serve you for four more years. <clears throat> And I, too, want to um, uh, echo your, your gratitude to the media for their presence here and the audience for tuning in uh, in whatever um, fashion that they're able to do so. We are grateful for that. And as a gentle memory reminder, I, for all your correct and timely government information, please visit our uh, website at bvi.gov.vg. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at BVI Government and on Instagram at GISBVI. I'm Chief Information Officer Desiree Smith, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a good rest of the day.